Hey folks. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about a project. So we've started, kicked off recently with an Intel to look at developing a native IPsec library for DPDK. Um, so I guess I'm going to cover here today, just walking through kind of an introduction, the kind of the architecture of the library, how, how we intend to use it, some of the um, the proposed maybe applications, um, and then I was going to look at the current there's a timer there. <laughs> Chris, this remembers, reminds me of last year. Um, so I was going to talk about the data plane APIs that we proposed in the first RFC, and then talk about where we are now and what we're planning to do over the next couple of while. So w one of the things about IPsec, it it's, will be kind of the first higher level, slightly higher level protocol uh, library in DPDK. We've been very much focused just on a hardware uh, enablement at Ether devices, crypto devices. Um, we, we have some fundamental libraries like hashing and tables, et cetera. Like, uh, and, and this is, we're looking at IPsec, obviously, as a full security protocol stack. It's contained as a, an element of layer, the layer three processing, so it's it's easily to develop in a in in, in a fashion that it's it's contained. Um, so wh why what do we want to do this? So obviously, the the need to guarantee confidentiality and integrity of all communications for nearly all pr uh, applications has become ubiquitous in the last number of years. It's just the idea of sending plain text data across the internet is just no longer really a valid uh, thing, a, a valid idea. You just can't do it. Um, IPsec is, n is one of the core protocols used to secure co communications, especially at the infrastructure level. Um, in, in terms of why we would want to do it in DPDK, the IPsec processing has a very large overhead in, in your CPU cycle cost. It, it's, it, it, it's with the encryption uh, uh, algorithms, you, you like it, it for very, and especially in very small packet t uh, type uh, applications. The, 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 it's very difficult to ramp past two, two, three gigabits per second on any, on a single core if you're doing the whole the, the whole processing on a, on a CPU, um, and that that's not even accounting for application uh, cycles on top of that. So. Um, there's also, like in DPDK, we've been doing over the last number of years, we've done a lot of work to enable hardware acceleration through the crypto dev. And then, uh, as Ako just talked about, RT security for giving APIs for an, uh, enabling these uh, hardware accelerations for crypto or full protocol offload. And, and that's creating a coupling between the actual software IPsec stacks or libraries and the hardware underlying that. And it's not straightforward in all cases to to manage that coupling the mapping to devices uh, and uh, 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 you, there's there's a, there's overhead and, and, and complexity added to your application that a lot of time is irrelevant to what someone is actually trying to do they don't want to you don't want to spend right a thousand lines of boilerplate C code managing crypto devices mapping queue pairs to threads uh, figuring out which ETHDEV port supports inline crypto, which doesn't, how to hook everything up in, in a, a cogent way. And, and um, having a library that, that's uh, designed to use those APIs is, uh, it, it will, will, I think, make the adoption of IPsec either, easier for applications. As I said, a lot of the IPsec solutions that are out there, I think can could get a substantial performance improvements by taking a DPDK treatment, looking at how we can make APIs burst oriented, uh, especially if, uh, in virtualized environments. And, and if, you're, if you're having to deal with fat flow uh, IPsec pipes, how do you scale out, how do you scale your flow processing out across multiple cores? It's not, um, it's not 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 uh, a s simple solution, and I think we, we can in DPDK we can offer a, a good if we we've developed this in DPDK we can use the the the, the kind of core um, 
elements that we have developed in DPDK for, for a lot of different solutions to, to help with that. And as I said, we can take advantage of those acceleration APIs. And, and also, with the, the, the kind of prevalence and in, in the enablement of hardware accelerations, especially in, in, again, going back kind of virtualized environments, there, I think there is a need for some sort of software equivalent functionality. To, if you want someone to pick up a hardware accelerator that does inline crypto, and they're in a virtual, they want to write their application that's going to take advantage of that the whole time. If it's not there, do they have to do, does the application have to carry a full IPsec stack and all of the crypto processing? Or can, is there, is, can we pick up that slack and allow people to write, write their application once and not have to deal with the complexities of different hardware environments? Um, so in terms of setting out to, to look at this, what were the goals? that we had for creating IPsec library in DPDK. Obviously, high performance. We want to make it a modular library. So build it around the core of just the data path processing and SA management. And th that's equivalent to what most uh, hardware acceleration is going to offer you. The hardware accelerators is just going to do the data path. It's not going to have any of the control path. It's going to have limited implementations, usually of the security policy databases and SA databases, depending on the device. So there'll be, uh, you, you'll still, in any hardware accelerator, you will still have software uh, databases there managing, ultimately managing the hardware uh, device underneath. And we, we kind of, we're looking to make the library similar, have a similar strategy. And then look at op optional modules to the library for implementing the scalable and performant the databases. So if you want to use the library's databases uh, for the security associations and security policy database, they're available. One of the things we really, I'm really interested to look at is crypto load balancing. So in an environment where you have maybe access to look aside crypto acceleration, you've got maybe inline crypto acceleration on some of your NICs. Uh, you've, you could also have full, a full inline, or you could also have a look aside protocol, Zach will talk about. Um, all of these devices, especially in terms of hardware acceleration, are usually have limited resources. You've only so much throughput available on your look aside accelerator. You may only be able to support so many sessions on your crypto device. So do, could we introduce something like uh, add QoS uh, attributes to tunnels and uh, allow the library to figure out where is the best place to actually handle the crypto pro or the processing of that? Do we do it? Is it a really low latency but low throughput uh, tunnel? Therefore, maybe keep it on the CPU. Is it a really high throughput but low priority? Use your Lucaside accelerator, which is for crypto processing, which is maybe has the, the best bulk performance. If you have low latency, high throughput, but limited resources on your I/O device, then those may those flows could get there. So this is like in the case where you maybe you're looking at hundreds of thousands of flows. And the interesting thing about um, IPsec is that there's such a variety of deployment models which have different knobs that you want to control for ultimately getting the best performance. Um, and then the last part the module that we think it will probably be towards the end of it would be an integration point for actually just hooking up to an iClient. client. We don't intend to develop Ike in DPDK, but we want to give the hooks to allow you to access uh, all their user space Ike implementations. Um, I th think I've covered most of the others. Um, so the library architecture, th these are just, as I've been talking about, the modules, so a core, the core data path and SA management, and then the ancillary modules with a, a shim layer to, to uh, link to the uh, to an external daemon, um, with the the idea being that you can pick up and use any of these um, as you need. So initially, we're looking at supporting three crypto processing models. The the the, fir the left is your so you've got your crypto accelerator where you're just doing it, you've got an IPsec library, it's offloading flows to your hardware accelerator, bring them back up to the stack, and then it will direct it out to an output nick. Um, I'm just noticing I've mislabeled the host crypto and look aside. 
Apologies. Um, your host crypto processing is shown in the middle, uh, where you're just doing the crypto processing and lying on a core. The, just it, it in crypto dev, obviously it's an asynchronous API, so you're still it still looks the the crypt, the look aside and and, and and CPU based processing looks the same in terms of the application integration, and then you've got the I/O based uh, inline crypto. So in in this mode, it's your IPsec processing is essentially synchronous because all you're doing is doing the protocol protocol header uh, management in in the CPU and the crypto processing, so your encryption authentication is delayed until you get to the, uh, your I.O. device on the way out. Um, so in terms of the, the library or data path, the, the APIs are SA orientated. So what I mean by that is it's, and I was gonna cover the actual a APIs in, in detail a little bit later, but they're, you're t you're, they're, they're designed to go, this is my tunnel handle and these are the packets to process. And that's, that, that, that design kind of choice is, is to allow us to gain the best performance when you're fa handling uh, tunnels uh, that are fat, the fat tunnel case where you've got lots of packets for the same tunnel it allows to make savings on things like sequence numbers at allocation. Uh, you're only hitting the, the, the SA context uh, once for that burst. So there, there's just the, those uh, amortizing the cost of the, of the, the IPsec related stuff um, in, in terms of the processing. Um, uh, the the low-level API. So we've got we're in the, an RFC. We we sent to the mailing list. It's only show. It's just uh, proposing the low-level APIs, and this is th these are for handling just the protocol processing. Um, so uh, and they, they they don't cover the crypto crypto processing. So that's it. it and again, we'll see in the detail. So it's it's uh, how how that looks like later on. But basically, the crypto pro how you. Choose to do your crypto processing, and the, de the crypto device management would be left to the user. Then the, the next phase will be a higher-level API, which plans to abstract all, all of the hardware acceleration, all of the crypto processing. You just will uh, give your these are your packets, you, you, which you've pre-classified at an earlier stage. Go process them for me, and you get to process packets out of the other side. Um, and, and then, as I said before, the, the, the it's designed to be uh, modules, data path is independent of the other modules. So if you have existing applications which you wanted to pick up IPsec data path, you can use your existing table infrastructure and, and your infrastructure. So if you, to pick up just the performance on the, on, on the, the data path processing that we achieve. So on terms of your SADBs and so the security association databases and policies, we plan to develop a set of APIs and then for 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 supporting the, the those functions, and then we will at least give reference or performant uh, databases underneath that, maybe by, backed by DBDK primitives like the hash tables and ACLs tables that are already existing in DBDK, and also look at developing the, the actual have code for the actual inbound classification. Uh, an outbound classification is required that hooks everything up. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the, one of the other modules we're looking at would be, will be a crypto load balancer uh, for selecting the, grip, the, the best crypto processing options, options available um, on a per SA basis. So in, in most cases, it doesn't look, from the analysis that we've done so far, it doesn't look like it makes a lot of sense to, to, to when you have a, a single tunnel flow to try and distribute the processing of that to different models. So if, say, in the case of you had a look aside a crypto accelerator and you're also doing CPU crypto, so potentially for very small packets, it would make sense to keep those processing on core and then for larger packet size offload to the accelerator. But that adds in a lot of complexity in terms of keep maintaining order of your flows and would in induce jitter into your your packet flows as well. So, in most cases, it we, we, it looks like y you should defi define your crypto processing model uh, or your processing model based on a tunnel basis. Um, and also, 
the, the second part of that would be allowing support of migration, migration of a, a flow from one processing model to another, how we can handle the complexity of that. So if your inline accelerator gets oversubscribed uh, and you have higher priority flows, you could dynamically move them off to the CPU or to your liquid side processor. And then the last kind of module the, or component of the library that we'll be looking to develop would be something like a Netlink uh, XForm shim layer to allow something like an existing iClient like StrongSwan to, to integrate to say, what we'll, we'll probably target is extending the security gateway sample application to allow that so you can have uh, auto rekeying. So like in terms of how, sort of how we see the pipelines looking for this, this is just a simplified view of a unprotected to protected port flow. So it's your inbound, so encrypted IPsec, IPsec packets coming in. You could have your IPsec SADB module, then after classification handing out to your IPsec data path processing, and then I, through your IP output stage and then to your TX burst. Um, Again, just I'm just I'm just trying to illustrate in these pictures really that we want to try and make the the, the library architect in a in a, uh, in a modular fashion that you can if you have an existing application that is doing all of this already that possibly you might just be interested in plugging in the data path part. Um, one of the other things that we're looking at is how we can plug this in around the de event dev structure. Uh, that's in DPDK already. So th again, this would be especially looking at the uh, fat pipe, the fat flow uh, problem, where you need multiple w uh, worker cores to handle all of that processing. So one of the things we've been look thinking about there is, is it possible to, um, so IPsec processing on ingress is, serial uh, is serialized by your anti-replay uh, functions. Can we pull the anti-replay functions out and maybe into one or two components so you can you can do that function on your Rx core, but then the actual ordering of any individual crypto pro uh, sorry any individual packet it doesn't actually matter. After that point, you can do your decryption and authentication independently, and then you the sequence number update for your window also has to be synchronized in a, in a in the in order, um, so you, we could do that on, on our TX core. So we're we're just we're trying at the moment we're just trying to keep all of these problems in mind with the development, and then um, when, when we start to prototype these and see what sort of performance benefits and, and how these we can get this to scale. So in terms of application enablement, um, we. We plan first for the security security gateway sample application. Would the plan would be to move this uh, the, that application to use this library once we have parity with the current features in the sample application. Um, then to continue to use that as a vehicle to enable new th features. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, ideally we would like to have auto keying uh, available, so have an external I client connected to the security gateway, and that would show all of the components of the library um, to working together. Um, so for their work downstream, we're currently actively looking at how, how IPsec could be enabled for OVS DPDK in light of the work that's currently happening to re-enable IPsec in, in OVS in the kernel with, uh, in conjunction with Oven. So how we can get a model that would uh, facilitate that. So I mean, talking a lot with the DPDK OVS team within, within Intel, and we were just kind of starting early, investi early investigation in that. Um, and we also need to, like we want to, obviously, if there's anyone from other downstream project consumers of DPDK that are interested in collaborating, like Tungsten Fabric, et cetera, th definitely th we'd really like to hear from you. So now I'm gonna hand over to Awal, he's gonna talk about some of the detail, because he's doing some of the real work. Thanks, Declan. Um, uh, thanks for covering a lot of uh, uh, things already. So uh, in the data path API, so it's uh, basically consists of like a high level APIs and the low level APIs. So uh, when we talk about this low level API, so we have the packets and uh, those packets are classified by ASA based. And so the, all the low level APIs mostly all are ASA level operations. 
And when we have this as a labor operation, so it's like security associations, and it handles um, like a, with the best processing. Um, so it uh, it does it supports as um, like crypto inland crypto and Lucaset crypto model, and it supports the for both egress and ingress traffics. And we are uh, uh, targeting for the ESP header and uh, AH header both for both. Um, so in the ingress, what uh, the main operation like uh, the ba the standard operations? What is like it? Uh, for this, it do the uh, decryption and then integration check, validation, and if it requires, um, then uh, it strips the header and also it does the replay attack checks, the sequence numbers, uh, these uh, operations are there. And on the other hand, for the outbound traffic, it's just the opposite way. It is, uh, again, it looks for the sequence number handling for if it needs to be a header uh, added for tunneling header or ESP uh, CPSEC headers and uh, for integration and uh, again encryption things. And uh, these are for the crypto look aside, for obviously for inline crypto, we don't need to do this like a, uh, these are only the, uh, the encryption and decryption done by the hardware. Sometime also if the hardware supports the protocol, maybe that would be also can be uh, offloaded to the hardware uh, inline processing. And uh, so in the data path, in the asset level API, we kind of categorize them for this, uh, for the look aside crypto, we call it like a, Asynchronous uh, API, uh, I'll talk it in a minute, minute. and uh, then also the synchronous API for the inline IPsec models. Um, so before that, so we, for these uh, asset level APIs, we have uh, basically two parts on the control, level, control path APIs, which is asset management level APIs. So it has to do for application has to use this. So we have this RT IPsec assay structure, which is uh, completely up to the application, which is will manage all the memory allocation. So it's not a library is going to do that. Library will get, get this memory. So to do that, we have API for get size for NSA. And it uh, takes a parameter is a, is a size, which is for to allocate the window for, to, for the replay attack. So when you have the total size of the assay, then uh, application allocates the memory for the assay, and then it calls the initialization API called uh, IPsec assay in it. So the parameter takes like an assay and also the uh, user, prov the assay param, which is like it provides all the user par provided parameters like uh, is it, uh, what kind of uh, crypto is going to support, is it uh, ESP related information, then the header information, like a tunneling header, or is it a transport, and um, then also like uh, all the transform, like uh, crypto transform parameters, all are provided through this param. And based on this, then the assay is initialized, and then we are ready for this uh, data path processing. And so when you have this uh, data path processing, and so for asynchronous mode, like look at crypto, or, so we have like uh, as a, Declan already covered, and also Akil also provided a lot of uh, detail about this processing, so I'm not going to take a lot of time. So we have a bunch of packets, and uh, which is uh, associated with an assay, and it uh, does all those crypto or dec um, crypto operations, or encryption, decryption, and also all the header-related operation, uh, add the header or distrib the header. This, uh, so we have this um, uh, API called IPsec Crypto Prepare, so which it does is the assay, and it takes a bunch of packets, and then it prepares that crypto ops. And in the crypto ops, based on this param, it prepares all those crypto ops. Uh, so it basically it fills up all the crypto functions for ready for this look at uh, crypto operations. Then we have this, uh, when we have ready for this, then we use the application is supposed to use this um, RT crypto uh, RX burst and uh, then Q and the DQ functions to do all those crypto processing. And after the crypto processing is done in this hardware or look at crypto, then we have this crypto process. So this is called uh, the post-processing operations. So if it is uh, checks whether it is uh, the crypto processing was successful or unsuccessful, and it needs to be dropped some of the packet for the bad packets, and then it is uh, supposed to handle the tunnel header and the ESP headers. And uh, one thing is, so the parameters, so it takes the crypto ops, 
and the uh, MBOPS, but after that, it also has two, two other, uh, one parameter, which is uh, IPsec stack specific, which is called IPsec group. So what we do, like, uh, after the crypto operation is done in the hardware, so we don't expect that all of the packets comes in an order, there, and also all of the packets doesn't come in a, for per assay basis, or so when you have this array of MBOPS, it, they may not belong to the same assay, it could be a different assay. So we, we have this IPsec group, so what you do inside the IPsec library, we group those packets in the par assay basis again, and so this structure has a parameter like a list of MBOPS and also the count, so par assay basis. So and also group has a parameter called, it's an OPEC parameter, it's a flow ID. It could be the assay, per, assay pointer or it could be user provided flow ID which could be used as a, like a multiplexing multiple flows under the same assay or something. So this kind of, uh, so this is a, uh, uh, helps to keep in mind to do the best processing of all those packets again to, so that it, uh, we can do faster uh, power operations. So this, uh, this uh, graph actually, Akil already showed the similar graph I remember. So it's the same thing, so we have assay lookup, so we have for the packets, we have, uh, with the, for all the packets, uh, we have, uh, uh, when we, have, we know that this is belongs to an assay, then for this assay, we call this uh, IPsec API, low-level API, and we prepare, then we pass it to the hardware, to the crypto NQ, crypto DQ, where all the make actual crypto processing happens. Then we, after that, we have, we check it out, is it a good packet, or is it done on uh, bad packet, then add hardware or this. And also, we check it out for this uh, sequence number. Uh, handling over there. So this is a one-way path, so this is an asynchronous, so other way would be, so when you do crypto prepare is there, definitely we have to set the parameter for this decrypt, and also we do this decryption, and we processing, if we need to be outgoing packet, we need to be add tunnels and all those uh, uh, IPsec uh, headers. So when we have uh, this, and uh, for the synchronous mode, so which is actually for the inline crypto, so obviously we don't have to deal with this, look for the crypto NQ and DQ parts, so we can get away with this. Uh, so we have only one API for this inline crypto, the inline process. So we have, uh, and we know that this is belongs to all the MBUBs, belongs to the same assay. And um, so we pass it to the same API, it does checks that hardware successfully did this encryption or decryption or not. And then based on that, it again looks for this, um, uh, further operations, and uh, if it is some, some of the failed packet, like uh, inline crypto failed or something, it returns an error, and uh, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, it, uh, and also it adds IPsec header or uh, the tunneling header and all those uh, parameters. So we have this, and uh, so uh, Dr. already mentioned a lot of uh, higher level things like uh, SEDB, SPDB handling and also the, the load balancing handling. So those all be all belongs to these higher level APIs. And uh, we, we don't have, uh, so the low, uh, low level API doesn't cover this. So wh what do we have this for the higher level API? We can, we can create the one uh, crypto IPsec stack, which is the context. So we can say like a one context, it could run one uh, core or multiple core or something. And one uh, IPsec stack is uh, like an uh, independent uh, IPsec stack. So we can, if we required, we can create a multiple IPsec context uh, and uh, uh, to handle a, a parallel IPsec stacks or something. But uh, it's uh, for a script. Okay, uh, enough for uh, API. So the current status is um, we have sent an RFC last week, I guess. And Constantine sent this, uh, so we have some comments, and we are looking for more feedbacks, please, and more comments. And uh, there are, this is a obviously very complicated uh, domain, complicated uh, uh, PS things. We need more discussion, more things, what should be done, and how it could be done. Community, if anybody wants to collaborate or our project or anything, would be more, more, more than welcome, definitely. And uh, so what we are planning, so we are planning uh, to have these uh, low-level uh, APIs upstream in this 18.11, and uh, which is basically supports only the tunnel mode right now because uh, we are not adding the transport mode, but it's v6 before, uh, before. 
And we have a limited algorithm support right now, the ACBC and GCM, NAL, and for authentication, uh, HMAC SHA-1 right now. And uh, we are not going to upstreaming any um, uh, sample app right now. When the later we are, we are so to have this test, uh, to test this uh, functionality, we will provide some unit test uh, under uh, duplicate test suites. And these are the, our initial targets. And then after that, we have all the consequence roadmaps. Obviously, we have a more discussion. We are welcoming more discussion what would be there. And add this, this list are, is not really uh, only the list which could be added or deleted later. So transport mode, uh, then the most important, the IPsec sample, security gateway sample application, how we are going to deal with that. High level APIs, SADB API, SPDB API the security policy, and also the IC integration. So we have lots of room for discussion and uh, communication for this. And uh, we are looking for comments from all of us. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Um, I I, I really want to trust that the API in DPDK are well defined enough to implement this kind of library on top of DPDK. Uh, but what I don't understand is why you want to have this library inside the DPDK project. I was, yeah. I was just going to ask the same question. We've already got NACL and now Zinc and two or three other user space crypto frameworks which are getting reviewed and looked at in a lot more detail than DPDK crypto would ever get looked at. So I would ask the same question, why isn't this just a wrapper around a pre-existing external project? So in terms of IPsec, I, I haven't seen any open source project that implements an IPsec stack in user space that isn't strongly coupled to a full solution that you could just wrap in DPDK. Like it, it, the the yeah, there's I'm, I'm not I'm not aware of a, even an open source IPsec project it, it, at the moment. So you've got obviously the kernel implementations, but we we have I did look at uh, so libuinet, which is a free BSD to user space port, and the, we we did look at uh, the feasibility of a number well, actually it's a number of years ago now the feasibility of pulling that out of FreeBSD and wrapping it in DPDK, but realistically, you just had to take the whole of FreeBSD stack. It just was not, you just could not decouple it. I, I'm not, the, the, so the, the question is, if we don't do this, how are our users, like, so I'm, I know there's, I'm sure there's a, a multitude of commercial uh, IPsec user space solutions out there. I know Sixwind have a product. But in, in terms of an OVS-like project, project, so OVS could obviously do their own implementation. There's a number of vSwitch open source projects. There, is there a, use, a user space option for those? There's none that I'm aware of today. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not questioning the need for the library. I'm questioning where should, should it be hosted and who should maintain it? Uh, you know, all these guys in the room, do you think they really want to manage more backport, more uh, maintenance, more testing, have a bigger code base? And do, are you sure everybody feel comfortable not seeing the limit of the scope of what is in DPDK? Um, to me, uh, so we, we already have a lot of L3 components. We've got fragment, uh, reassembly, IP fragmentation. There, there's a number of L3 components in DPDK already. Uh, IPsec surely is pushing the scope, but fundamentally it's becoming, I, I think the hardware acceleration use case and that software equivalence model is going to drive, it's, it's needed somewhere. There's a, a lot of downstream consumers of DPDK. Does it make sense? I think it makes sense to have it in DPDK because then it's consumable at all those projects. Maybe there's an argument to say that it should be a sub tree project of DPDK, um, th that's something I think the community needs to discuss. I, I think it's definitely something that's needed. Uh, that would be my opinion anyway. Yeah. So we've done a lot of work on another open source deck that has IPsec in it. Um, 
Okay, I've got three things here. Um, one, that sequence number synchronization you sort of passed off to maybe you can do it on a, on a transmit core. Um, that's sort of an unsolved problem right now, especially yeah. for GCM. And uh, I think it's probably going to require getting, you know, Intel and the, the, the ARM vendors involved to find out what the, the best approach is there, especially across, you know, different architectures. It's either, you know, Atomics or um, potentially doing all the work on, a, like, a management core or something. Yes, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and we haven't, we haven't gone there yet either. I've been sort of waiting for somebody else to approach this, so that might be a, a good thing. Uh, secondly, there's, you mentioned the FreeBSD stack. There is some interesting work on async crypto processing in later reps of FreeBSD. Um, and we just enabled that in, in one of our products and gotten really good results, um, even like on like a little Denverton, yeah. where we're getting, you know, 905 megabits on a, you know, a small four core box um, without yeah. using all the cores all the time. Um, and third, uh, you mentioned wanting to do, implement a uh, Netlink interface into other user space like demons like StrongSwan. Yep. We've done that and we're, there are some, you know, tricks to it, but we're very w willing and interested in collaborating with you on that. That, that, would, be, that would be great. It's, it's something I freely admit it's aspirational at this point and I've only did li limited research. I think it's something that would be needed if this was, yeah. Have you considered it uh, moving into the security library? Because if we have multiple protocols, uh, we will be bloating the lib folder. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess that, that's, that was one of our thoughts, but it should be, should it be subdirectory under R2 security for of software implementations. I think at the moment we're just, it's simpler to do it this way, but if that's, if that's where the community thinks it should live, I, I don't think there's any, would be any issue with that at all. It would, for the hardware acceleration use case, that might work. Um, I have a totally different question. I, w I would be interested to know who in this room uh, would like to see this kind of library, but for WireGuard. Do, do you know WireGuard, by the way? Yeah, it, it, whatever you think of its maturity is coming fast and hard. Um, so an implementation like this for WireGuard would be of great interest, especially if it was an independent variant. Okay. Uh, I think, it, uh, but, but what WireGuard has no traction in comms infrastructure today. Which, which not not going to say it's not going to happen, but it, 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 pro it, lo it looks very promising, and I know there's the Linux kernel community or seem to be very in favor of adopting it and getting it in there. So with that, with, with that happening, obviously, it, it's, it's going to get huge traction across, across the board with that availability. But IPsec is a fundamental part of LTE, of a lot of comms. Pro like it, it's specified in a lot of specifications. And, a lot of a lot, a lot of that infrastructure is being virtualized as we speak today, and, and that and, and having and DPDK is, is a core part of a lot of the, the people who are working in that area's toolkit. So, having a good solution for IPsec there, I definitely I think doesn't exclude saying also we could do WireGuard, we could do MacSec, you could do PDCP if you wanted to also in software, whether. We want to grow DPDK's community to, to maintain all of those things. I guess like there's the problem of the expertise in, in the area. The, the security is a very sensitive area, and uh, it has to be very strongly uh, <coughs> the, the I guess the code quality and, and the, the the potential for issues has to be very strongly looked at and managed within the community. Okay. I suggest we leave it there. Yep. And uh, any questions, so just catch. Thanks, guys. Sure. Catch and uh, the, the, I mean, the guys are around anyway, so it sounds like a topic for <laughs> lots uh, of line, offline discussion. Just one line answer to the Akil's question. In the in the RFC, we have some comments like uh, some possible section could be moved to the RT security or something. Obviously, we welcome more comments or more discussion over there. Thanks. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.